Hey, third grade, and welcome back. It is week seven, day four. It is Thursday, woof, woof, and we are back into math, and we're looking at some skip counting. I sure hope you did your skip counting, counting by twos, counting by fives, little exercise, da, 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 da. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, hope you got your stuff, and today you need something to write with and something to write on. Right on, let's get rocking and rolling. First thing first, we're gonna look at our word problem and you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna rip it apart. I read the problem, I identify the important information. P, plan how to solve the problem. P, draw a picture. E, execute your plan and solve it. And D, does it make sense? Check it out. Let's move on. And the last couple days, you have been looking at fractions on a number line. And I thought, what? This would be a cool idea. So we're going to take a look at some fractions on a number line. And they look happy. Yay. So let's take a look. This might be a little bit different of a setup. So let's write it down and see what happens. So we're going to do, we are going to rip R I P P. E and D. So first thing first, our, uh, read the problem. What fraction is shown at each of the points below? Hmm. Both of those have the same directions. So I read both of them. Do, do. I identify the important information. So you're like, whoa, wait a sec, Mrs. Jones. We don't have a lot of important information, but we do. We know that we are looking at fractions. We are looking at both of them. We need the fractions. And we want to know at each point. So each point, each point. Now, as you can see, we kind of have a little bit of a key here. So looking at, we've identified, we're gonna make our plan. We're gonna talk through this right now. We have a little bit of a key. We have some smiley faces and we have some hearts and we need to know where they are on the number line. Now I put two of them here because this will be a kind of a fast word problem, but I also want you to be able to, you know, we do it once together and then you go, oh, I got it. And then we'll do the next one together. See, it makes sense. So we're gonna do a little bit of a plan here. We see our key. When I need to find out what unit is this line even cut into? Well, it's like a Twizzler. If I have a Twizzler and I have to share it with some friends, I'm gonna cut it into some pieces. Well, each one of these pieces is going to be a fraction, a fractional unit. Each one of these pieces tells me what my line is cut into. So when I look at my number lines, I'm gonna count how many pieces it's cut into. Okay, makes sense. Then I'm just going to count over like little hops on a number line to see what my fraction is. So ready? Let's do one together. <laughs> We're going to do them all together, you silly. So we've got our plan. My picture, ta-da, is already done for me. It's a number line and I've got my happy face and my heart. So my picture is already done for me. Now let's execute. So first thing first, we need to find out how many pieces is this number line cut into? Let's check them off. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six pieces in between the zero and the one. So you're looking at how many pieces is there between the zero and the whole. Now, if the whole was in a different spot, so say maybe this was a hole, maybe that was my hole cut, I would count from the zero to the hole. You only go from zero to the hole or from like one to two. You are counting from hole to hole. That's it. So even though I might have more on that number line, I wouldn't count that far. I'd only count from the zero to the hole. So looking at this guy, I'm going to count from the zero to the hole. Boop, boop, and we came up with six cuts. So I know that each one of these little pieces is worth one six. So that's worth, worth one six. That's worth one six. This piece is worth one six. This piece is worth one six. This piece is worth one six. And this piece is worth one tenth. No, it's worth one six. So one six. Now, oh, okay. 
Okay. So kind of think of it as like you're jumping through the number line. How many pieces? So this guy got, ch -ch -ch. how many six did this one get? Oh, okay. So he got one. So my smiley face got one, six. Now we're looking at the heart. How far to the heart? So you go from the zero and I'll do a different color so you can see the zero. There's one, six. Here's another one. So that's how many six do we have now? One, six plus one, six is two, six. And then I've got one more six. So how many six, <laughs> say that a couple times, how many six do I have to get to the heart? I have one, six, two, six, three, six. So it has three, six. Oh, now let's take a look at the next one. First thing first, how many pieces is that cut into? So first thing we need to identify where is the zero, zero, and where's the hole? There's my hole, there's my one. And now how many pieces are cut in between? Okay, piece of cake, let's count them. Here's one piece, two pieces, three pieces, four pieces, five pieces. This line is cut into fifths. Let me erase those. It's cut into fifths. So each one of these pieces is worth is with one fifth. That's 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 one fifth. Okay, makes sense. Now, if I numbered my number line and I went up, so that would be one fifth. This would be two fifths. This would be three fifths. Very good. This would be four fifths. And this last one would be five fifths because I know I say to myself, self, I know when I have a five over a five, that's a whole, that's a one. Or if I had six over six, that would be a whole. Or if I had, let's see, <laughs> let's get wild, eight over eight, that would be a whole. They all equal one. So five fifths is one. So now looking at my spots, I can just count right up my number line. This would be one fifth. This would be two fifths. So my smiley face is at two fifths. And when I number my number line, that's exactly where he goes. And my heart, who is at the one, my one and only heart, he is at what fraction, which would be five fifths. And my five fifths is equal to one. Now that's an important piece that we're gonna look at that we wanna make sure that that's one. So any number over itself is equal to one. Five over five, two over two, three over three, four over four, go ahead, tell me one. What? Beautiful, exactly what I'm talking about. You could even go huge numbers. You could be like 100 over 100, any number over itself equals one, which keep that in your head because we're using that. Let me go to the next page. All right, you ready? So we executed. Does it make sense? Of course it makes sense. Don't be silly. <gasps> Moving on. Now, looking at these fractions, these beautiful little shapes, if I wanted to make equivalent fractions, I could easily look at them and go, hey, I'm just gonna cut it. I'm just gonna add another cut line in here. So if I look at the, this is one half, what would be an equivalent fraction? If I cut each piece one more time, watch this, zoop. Oh, now what do I have? So I have that one half equals, how many pieces are colored? Two out of total, four. What? Mind blown. Now, if I'm looking at the next shape and I see what is my fraction? My fraction is two thirds. And I look at that and I go, I'm gonna cut those pieces again. Piece of cake, watch this cool cut. I'm gonna go right down. Okay, how many colored? One, two, three, four. Uh oh. Four out of, oops, <laughs> four out of total pieces would be six. Guess what? Those are equivalent pieces. Crazy. I'm getting crazier. Here we go. Hold on. Looking at this one. 
Again, I'm gonna cut these pieces each in half. Now I can't just do a quick little cut like I did with my circle and go whoop across, or with my rectangles and go whoop right down. But I'm still gonna cut each one of these into half. Each one of these pieces, I'm cutting it into a half. And I know that I can cut them. That's a half. A oh, whole. That cuts them into a half. A oh, whole. And I'm going to cut this one into a half. And these are all equal pieces. So when I first looked at it, it was how many pieces were colored? Two out of three. So two out of three. And now how many pieces do I have colored? I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have four pieces out of six. And guess what? These are equivalent, these fractions. So you can see it's the same size of my whole shape that's colored each time. Let's take a look at this guy. Again, I'm just gonna cut each one of these shapes in half again. Watch this. So right now I've got how many pieces colored? Three out of four. And if I cut them each again, do, do, do. Oh, oh, I can go right across. Do, do, do. And then, sorry about my drawing. I'm doing all right though. And then I go this way. Do, do, do. I've cut them each again. Now, how many pieces do I have total? Hmm. Count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight pieces total. And how many colored? One, two, three, four, five, six, six. And those are equivalent. Now, that's pretty easy when I give you a picture. What if I don't give you a picture? Uh-oh. What if I don't, hmm, say, give you a nice drawing? You can draw your own. Or you can multiply by a number. Whoa, whoa, hold that back. If I look at these, hmm, this right here says multiply by two. Well, wait a second. You're not really multiplying by two. You're actually multiplying by two over two. <gasps> two over two, well, anything over itself is a one. So if I multiply any number by one, I get that number. Aha, uh -huh. so we're multiplying by one. Two over two is one. That's why they're equivalent. But it means I have to do two over two or three over three or five over five. It has to be the same. So what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So if I multiply two times two, I get four. I multiply three times two, I get six. Essentially, I'm multiplying it by one. That's an equivalent fraction. If I look over here, I cut each one of these in half. Half. Oh, oh, half is a two. So if I multiply, one times what gives me two? Oh, one times two. I'll do it in a different color so you can see it. Times two is two. Two times two is four. Uh-oh, does this work for the other one? Two times two is four. Three times two is six. Let's look at this guy. Two times two is four. Three times two is six. What? Three times two is two. And four times two is eight. So when I multiply by two, two over two, right? Two over two equals one. Any number over itself equals one. Okay. When I cut things in, half, I make one piece into two. That's why I'm multiplying by two. All right, all right, all right. I see where you're going with this. So, hmm, looking at this, this is kind of called an equivalent fraction star. But what I'm trying to show you now is it doesn't have to be just two. So one times two is two. Two times two is four. Okay, that fraction works. What did I multiply one half by over here to get three six? What did you say? Three, yeah. So three over three. So one times three is three. 
And two times three is six. Oh, oh, let's look. All right, one and a half, I'm gonna multiply it times what to get four eighths? If I multiply it by four over four, let's see. One times four is four. Two times four is eight. What did I multiply here? I multiplied by, let's see, five over five. One times five is five. Two times five is 10. This is an equivalent fraction. So as you can see, it doesn't have to be just two over two. It can be, like I said, any fraction that equals one. Any fraction that tells me this is a one. So three over three or four over four or eight over eight or a hundred over a hundred. That would be a big a lot of pieces that I would have to cut, wouldn't it? Now, I can do it with fractions that are not just like one half. I can do it with fractions that have different numerators and denominators. So if I look at two thirds, okay, so two thirds, if I multiplied it by two over two, let's see, two times two is four, three times two is six. Over here, let's try, let's see, four over four. Hmm, two times four is eight. Three times four is 12. Does that one work? Yes, it does. Let's see, what might I have picked to go here? Two times what equals 10? Hmm, two times five. Let's see if that works. Five over five, right? Because we got to equal one. So two times five is 10. Three times five is 15. Did it work? Mm hmm. Now, two times what gives me 12? Two times six, so six over six. Two times six equals 12, that works. Three times six equals 18, that works. So as you can see again, it doesn't matter long as it's the same on the top as it is on the bottom. So let's peek real quick here. We're gonna move along to Oh, take a look at this page. Now here, they show you up top where we split the shapes. I split them. I split each piece in half again. Now, let's take a look at where I don't have shapes. Okay, hmm. now I'm gonna do a little detective work. I'm gonna have to figure this out. So I see they gave me, they gave me the bottom numbers, but I'm missing this top. That's my mystery. So I need to figure out what did I multiply the six to get the 12? Hmm. What did I multiply or divide? 12 divided by what gives me six? Oh, that's, I cut it in half, didn't I? So 12 divided by two, divided by two. Six divided by two would be three. It's just because I went backwards that I went divided. If I wrote it the other way, Watch this, I'll show you. If I wrote it the other way, and I said six to 12 is the same as what to six? See, it's the same thing. Six times two and whatever times two equals six. Same idea. All right, ready? Three times what gives me two? Er, I just told you. Three times what gives me six? Three times two, Mrs. Jones. So three times two gives me six. So what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Same number, because two over two is one. One times two is two. Pretty good. Let's take a look at this guy down here. Three times what gives me nine? Three times what gives me nine? Three times three. So three times three gives me nine. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top because three over three is one. So three times three is nine, two times three is six, an equivalent fraction. Now looking at this, I could pick any number I want. So if I said one third and I said to you, hey, shout out some numbers for me. And you would say to me, Mrs. Jones, I'm gonna say a hundred because everybody likes to go big. So what I do to the bottom, I do to the top because 100 over 100, right, is one. So three times 100 is 300. 
And one times 100 is 100. That's an equivalent fraction. <gasps> Wait a sec. So if that's an equivalent fraction, what else can we make? How about three or one third times what's going to be my fraction this time? I'm going to say, hmm, how about 50? What? 50. Let's do it. So three times 50. Oh, good golly. I could count by 50, couldn't I? Or I could count by fives three times with a zero at the end because that's what happens when we multiply by a 10. So five, 10, 15. Psh, psh. 150 and 1 times 50 is 50. That is the exact same as 1 third. These are equivalent fractions. So when you do equivalent fractions, you're going to multiply them by the same number because you're multiplying by 1. So 6 over 6 is 1. 8 over 8 is 1. 30 over 30 is 1. Mind blown. Or you can split your fraction pieces in half. And that's how you find equivalent fractions. So your word for today is going to be to split. S-P-L-I-T. Split them in half. Split them again. Or you're going to multiply them by the same on the top as the bottom because you're going to multiply them by one. Whew, that's a lot of information I threw at you today. Make sure you catch it all. All right, see you guys later. Bye.